We've used strings a few times already in this course. If you haven't been following the course, well, you can find all the lessons in the playlist in the description under this video. As I explained in the lesson on data types, strings are just bits of text. In effect, a string is formed from a sequence of characters strung together. Strings are funny things in programming. We are used to using words as the fundamental building blocks of our spoken and written language. So we might think that strings which contain words, well, they should be the fundamental data types in computer programming too. But in fact, they aren't. Remember that deep down inside, computers work with numbers. It's easy, therefore, to get a computer to make sense of a number such as 10 or 5,000, but it's not so easy to get it to understand a string such as 10 or 5,000, or to be or not to be, that is the question. I'm Hugh, and this is a lesson in my complete programming course. Most programming languages make a clear distinction between a single character, such as A, and a string, such as Hello World. Often, as in C-sharp and Java, characters are delimited by a pair of single quotes, and strings are delimited by double quotes. But why do we need two types? After all, I could create a string containing just one character. That is, instead of A in single quotes, I could write A in double quotes. This one is a character, it has the char data type. This one is a string, it has the string data type. In fact, even a string containing a single character is different from a single character that's declared to be a char. Or, as in Java and C-sharp, one that's delimited by single quotes. Let me prove that. Remember, in an earlier lesson, I said that you can't do arithmetic with strings. If I add the string 2 to the string 1, I don't get 3. I get a new string containing the characters 1 and 2. But now let me try doing that with two chars. This shows that when I add the character 2 to the character 1, the result is 99. Well, what does that mean? It turns out that you can do arithmetic with characters. In fact, there are some good reasons why you might even want to do, to do arithmetic with characters. For example, to encrypt a password, you could use arithmetic to change each character in a string. But what is this number? The number that I get when I add the character 2 to the character 1. It turns out that every character can be represented by a number. The number that represents the character for 1 is 49, and the number that represents the character 2 is 50. So when I add those two characters together, I get the sum of the two numbers, 49 plus 50 equals 99. These numbers are standard codes in computing. You can find them listed in ASCII tables. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It defines a list of numeric character codes that correspond to the alphabetic, numeric and other characters that we see on our computer screens. Now, unless you are doing some special sort of text processing, you may not need to make use of those ASCII code numbers. But bear in mind that as far as the computer is concerned, that is what a character is, a number. We see characters such as A, B, 1 and 2 on screen, but the computer just sees the numbers that represent those characters. I said earlier that there are some occasions when it's useful to do arithmetic with characters, and I gave the example of encryption. You could encrypt a string by breaking it up into individual characters and then adding a number to the code of each character. That would have the effect of changing the character itself. Then, when you want to unencrypt the encrypted string, you would once again process each character, one at a time, by subtracting the number that you previously added. Now, when we want to use words and sentences in our programs, we need to use strings. C Sharp and Java provide a string data type for that purpose. A string is really just a collection, that's a list or an array of characters. 
strings at high level data types because a string cannot be represented by a simple number. To do that, you'd have to break the string apart into its individual characters because each character can be represented by a number. In fact, not all languages have a string data type. The C language, for example, doesn't. To use strings in C, you have to work at a lower level, by which I mean closer to the way that the computer hardware actually works. What we think of as a string is really a list of characters that are stored one after the other in the computer's memory. In C, to use strings correctly, I would need to understand how the computer stores those characters, and that's why dealing with strings in C can often be quite hard work. Luckily for us, C Sharp, Java, and many other modern languages hide all those low-level details from us. In the next lesson, I'll explain some ways of using strings in the C Sharp and Java languages. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to the Code with You channel and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new lessons.